we have people here. Who, who's here from like the Bay Area, California? Yeah, lots of people. West Coast, people from the East Coast. Sweet. We got. I know we have New York, D.C., Florida. I know we've got people in the middle of the country. We've got Texas. We've got Detroit. We have someone from Nebraska. I know is here. Hey, Nebraska's in the house. And I know we have folks from Australia. Good day. Thank you. And Israel over there, and China. There's some folks from China. So am I missing any awesome locations? Canada, that's right. We've got two, a couple people from Canada. Awesome. London. London, thank you, wonderful. So we're an international conference already. Um, and we've got people here from small, scrappy startups, from nonprofits, mid-sized companies, enterprise companies. A lot of you guys are in the people space on some level, but there's also founders and CEOs and COOs and creative directors. So there's a lot of wonderful people in this room, and my hope is that you really get a chance to continue to learn from each other. And, and the surveys that we sent out, and we asked you guys, you know, what are you hoping to get out of this conference? I'd say the vast majority of you said, I want to come and I want to meet people who are doing similar things to me that I can learn from and get new ideas and inspiration to take back to my organization. So that is our very strong intention for this weekend. And I wanted to just give you as some context for how this conference came to be and what it's all about so that you can be on the same page with us. So um, my background starts with, not that one, <laughs> this one. So uh, I co-founded a practice called Acro Yoga. Has anybody here heard of Acro Yoga before? Awesome. Has anybody here done Acro Yoga before? OK, cool. If you haven't had a chance to do it, we're actually going to have some Acro Yoga here later today. Surprise. Um, so you will have a chance to try it if you choose. Um, so if you haven't heard of Acro Yoga, it is a combination of yoga, acrobatics, and Thai massage that cultivates trust, connection, and playfulness. And it's really a, a linear progressive system that um, makes the seemingly impossible accessible to almost anyone. I spent 10 years traveling around the world, teaching at the top yoga conferences and festivals, teaching tens of thousands of students, certifying over 1,000 teachers, and basically generating a global movement with hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of practitioners on six continents. That was pretty cool. That was, that was a big project. Uh, and uh, it may seem fringe, acro yoga, if you're like, what is that? I haven't heard of that before. Um, but you know you've hit the mainstream when Tim Ferriss and Jimmy Fallon are doing acro yoga on The Tonight Show. And this was a really cool moment for me because Tim was a private student of mine and um, Jimmy Fallon's like my comedic idol. So this was a pretty awesome moment. But acro yoga for me was never about the physical practice. The physical practice for me was a metaphor for communication, for relationship, for teamwork and collaboration. And, um, you know, I didn't realize at the time that what we were really doing was building this global culture based on these three core values, and you may or may not be able to see them here, of connection, trust, and playfulness. This is the first postcard we ever made back in 2004, so this is the OG promotional materials. And so those core values were there from the very beginning and, and continue to be so today. But after those 10 years of really dedicating my life to spreading the Acre Yoga Dharma around the world, I got this uh, little voice that said, there's something else you're supposed to be doing. And I didn't know what that was, and that was really scary. Uh, but in 2013, I sold my half of the company to my co-founder and promptly entered a identity crisis <laughs> uh, where I was like, now I got what I wanted, I get to start over, but what am I doing? Who am I? What's important to me? What does this all mean? What do I do now? And through that process, I rediscovered these three core values of trust, connection, and playfulness really being at the core of my being and what's important to me. So for the past few years, I've been working with companies and teams like um, ESPN and Toyota and some awesome companies that are in the room today, Remains here, and Erica from Open Door. They're awesome. I've been working with them in SF. 
David Hassel's company, 15.5. I don't know if David's here yet, but he's speaking later today. Uh, and Somasaurus, who's in the room, they're a wonderful nonprofit. Woo, woo, Carly's here. <laughs> so I've been working with these companies to create, design, and deliver uh, transformational, experiential events that bring their cultures to life. And as I was going in and working with these different companies and just getting to intimately know them from the inside out, I just got this chance to experience how unique and wonderful and interesting and all the different approaches. And I got really excited by, like, by the uniqueness of that and how much room we have to pioneer this field of culture. There's no one, right way to do it, there's no one way to do it, it's unique to every organization, to every group of people, and I was like, wow, how cool would it be if we could bring all the leaders from these organizations together to exchange ideas and to share triumphs and challenges and, and interests and best practices and what we're struggling with so that we can actually help each other and support each other. And I thought, wow, we could really move this conversation forward a lot faster and a lot further if we brought awesome people into the room with open hearts who would generously share and be willing to reveal what's awesome and what's challenging. So thus, for, to create this bigger platform, the Culture Conference is born as a baby idea a year ago and now you're all here to make it come alive. So I am really here. The other part of this that's really important for me is I'm here to create a new paradigm of conference. Uh, we live in an information age where you can access any talk for free at home on your couch, on YouTube. You can read a book, you can read a blog, you can listen to a podcast. But why do we spend time and money and energy to come to these live in-person events? And I think it's because we're all really craving like deep, meaningful connection and experiences because in the end, that is what life is all about. And so, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I love this quote uh, by Benjamin Franklin, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. So our goal here is to really involve you and help us to do some really actionable hands-on learning, not only from the amazing presenters who are gonna wow you all weekend, but from your fellow participants, because each one of you could easily be on the stage and be leading the workshops. All of you are incredibly gifted and talented, so we really wanna give you the opportunity to unlock the wisdom that's already here all around you. This is an invite-only conference for leaders. So when I was doing research about like, okay, we're gonna do this culture conference, who should we invite, who should be in the room? Everyone said to me, like, if you wanna shift culture, you have to shift the leadership because they're the ones who are initiating and creating the foundation of culture. So we said, great, let's bring leaders into the room. And they said, and you have to really work on their inner world. We have to create more awareness. We have to create personal transformation because that's the only way we're gonna be able to shift culture also. So we said, great, let's do that too. And you know, between all of us, you, know, you all are in positions of leadership. So maybe you're af directly affecting your team, maybe you're affecting an apartment, maybe you're influencing a whole organization. And through your organization, that ripple effect to thousands of people, if not millions of people, we have the capacity this weekend with the 150 people in this room to influence millions of people. Like that's powerful. And it really depends on how we show up for the next two days the kind of impact we're gonna be able to have. So that's why you are here. That's why you are hand chosen to be in this room because you are in positions of influence and power and with great power comes great responsibility. So let's do this. So that's that and it's invite only because this is year one and we really wanted to um, consciously and intentionally cultivate the culture that's in the room and we know that good people know good people. So that's why you are all here. Our philosophy is about transforming leaders and teams from the inside out. So as I said, this is a combination of personal transformation and professional development. So we thought, if we just do professional development, we give you guys lots of tools and tips and skills and tricks, it's not gonna land nearly as well as if we do that inner work of personal transformation so it can land in that fertile soil of your self-awareness. So that's where we're gonna start. And so you'll see the conference is, has like four main breakouts, two today and two tomorrow. And it goes from the micro to the macro. So we're starting with the I, and then we move to the we, and then we go to the it. So the first breakout session you guys will be doing later this morning, it's about um, leading from the inside out. So it's about leadership and self-inquiry and how can we be the embodiment of the culture that we want to create around us. And then this afternoon we're moving into the team, the we. So we're talking about how to build a high performance team, how do we collaborate effect effectively together. And then tomorrow morning, we move into the it of the organization. So it's how to um, evolve as an organization. So you have to have that clear essence of what is this company? What is this about? And at the same time, 
be willing to be flexible and to innovate and to create as you grow. And then the last um, breakout is around designing programs and experiences. So we need to be able to make our culture come alive and actually have systems that are going to deliver that on a daily basis. So that's like the scope of the whole event so you know what's coming. The whole conference is based on four design principles. They are design principles that I've used for the past 15 years in all of my programs and facilitation work. And I've done curriculum design sessions with almost every single presenter and facilitator here. So we've talked about these four principles and how to integrate them into the material. So no matter what workshop you go to, you know that there's going to be a unified approach of all the facilitators. So I really feel like the facilitators, the presenters, the workshop leaders, we're a team. We're a unified team, and we're here to just knock it out of the park for you guys and create a really immersive experience for you this weekend. So those principles are interactive. That's our first principle. All of these are on this cool pop-up here, too. So it's interactive, so we want you guys to be connecting with each other because that's where you're going to learn the most, probably. Um, the second is engaging. So we really want to transform this educational paradigm from you being a passive observer to you being an active participant. So we really want to actively engage you with the material. It's actionable. So this is not a, an abstract idea or concept or theory. This is actionable, hands-on, in the moment, practical learning that you can take back and apply right away. The last principle, which is the favorite one, it's got to be fun, because life is too short not to have fun. And I'm a big proponent of play, for those of you that have been to my Play on Purpose workshops or done play-based experiences with me. I love play as a vehicle because we're built to play and we're built from play. Play is how we learn as children. It's how we best learn as adults. It lights your brain on fire. It helps you create no, new neural pathways and new ways of being. So we're going to have a lot of fun. Are you guys on board with fun? OK. Great. So we want to talk about culture. What do we mean? when we say culture, and what does that mean to the people in this room? So, your programs, they have been lovingly designed for you to be your companions for this journey. So I encourage you to like hold them near and dear, don't lose them, make sure your name is on the front of them, and they're gonna be your companion throughout this uh, journey, so you'll see like descriptions and things on the left and space to write on the right. So I just invite you to like go towards the beginning. You'll see this morning conversation, and there's some room on the right there. And the prompt I'd love you to, to answer right now in your programs, in one sentence, you're going to finish this sentence stem, a great culture feels like. So this is not your dictionary definition of what is culture, its roles and behaviors and these things, but it's what does culture feel like? And that might be very literal, it might be very figurative. It might be like culture, great culture feels like the sun on my face at the top of a mountain. Or it might be like, it feels like being fully accepted for who I am and unified with my team. So whatever that means to you, we're just gonna take about 30 seconds to a minute to write one sentence and you're finishing this prompt, a great culture feels like. And I'm going to give you an opportunity now, again, to turn to a new person near you, left, right, front, back, share your definitions and maybe a little bit about why that's important to you, what came up for you through that. And when you hear the bell, I'm just going to ring the bell at the end, so you're going to bring your focus back here. Thank you for sharing. And we'd love to hear from a few of you what you came up with as your definition. And we want to do this a little bit like wildfire. So if you just kind of, we're, we have mics again for you. But if you just stand up, say your name, and just read your uh, definition or your, your description without kind of, we don't need a pretext or context for it, just your name and your definition so we can hear from a bunch of people and just hear what you guys are thinking of in the moment. So if you'd like to share, you can raise your hand, stand, we'll get a mic to you. I'm Larissa, and to me, a great culture feels like a loving family that joyfully creates together and supports each other to grow into their best selves. Awesome. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Julian, and uh, a great culture feels like you're in a band, and they're having one of those crazy drum solos, and you're like, they're not on beat. And then when the one, when the drop hits again, it goes right back, and you're just like, how did they do that? Yeah. Nice. Let's get a bunch more. Yeah. Hi, my name is Julia, and I think a great culture feels like each person is valued for, what they for who they truly are and what they love to bring 
so that collectively we can create a world we're all proud to be part of. And a part of that is we can disagree, but if we're all proud to be where we are, then ultimately we end up on the same page. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I wrote uh, that it feels natural um, and organic. It can't feel forced or uh, contrived. Great. And actually, Karen needs to tell her answer. It's amazing. All right. You got nominated. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> I just got nominated. Uh, Karen Storky, and um, my definition was great culture feels like dancing on the moon. Hey, nice. That sounds fun. All right, a couple more, a couple more. Got Chris over here. And somebody over here, Nicole. Um, I'm Nicole, and to me, a great culture feels like its members intrinsically are motivated to participate. Awesome. Thank you. Nice. Hi, I'm Chris, and for me, a definition of a great culture is that it feels like a community. Yeah. Awesome. One or two more? Anyone else inspired to share? Yep. Hi, my name's Caroline. Um, so you're part of it. It embodies you, and you can't wait to be in it. You wake up in the morning and be like, I can't wait to get to work. That's a nice frame. Awesome. Anybody else? Last one? Somebody's out there like got a really good one that you're holding back. OK, awesome. Erica. <laughs> no pressure, Erica. Uh, I said a great culture feels like a really perfect dinner. Because I feel like the parts reflect who you are and what you enjoy. It's nutritious and it connects you to the greater like circle of life. Awesome, thank you, love it. Sweet, okay great, thank you guys all for sharing. So great culture is what it feels like to you. So it might be that you're in a great culture right now that you love, it might be that you've been one, been a part of one before, it might be that you think of one that really inspires you. But hopefully this weekend you're gonna get a lot of tools and approaches and strategies and ideas and concepts that you can take back so that you can, wherever you are right now, make that into the feeling that you are longing for or knowing in your spirit is possible. So we wanna talk about our guidelines. Um, the guidelines are in your program. However, we feel like it's not enough just to have the words on a printed page. We wanna really give you an experience of what it means to practice and live these guidelines. They might be things that you already know, things that you are already practicing, but for the sake of making the implicit explicit, we wanna have a chance to get everybody on the same page, and we're gonna have a fun time doing it, I promise. So, our first guideline is full participation. So, I often find that, you know, I get out of something what I put into it. So the more that you guys, and you're already doing an amazing job of this, show up fully present, fully available, willing, open, generous, receptive, willing to connect and to learn, the more you're gonna get out of this experience. So that might mean like drinking a lot of water, getting really nice rest, <laughs> making sure you eat enough, whatever you can do, so that when you step into this room, you're bringing your full positive presence, it will elevate the entire event. And so let's just, for the sake of fun, imagine that you were really bored right now. Like, you're a six out of 10 of bored. So just like put that in your body. Actually, what would that feel like? What would your body look like? Imagine this is like, I'm a substitute teacher and you're in high school and you're like a six out of 10 bored, like really bored right now. Okay, now what if you're like a 10 out of 10 bored? What does your body look like? What does your face look like? Be super, super bored. This is like the worst thing ever. You're like falling asleep. It's terrible, you hate it. From that place of like, I am so bored, what would you turn and say to the person next to you right now? This sucks, why am I here? <laughs> I hate this, she's so boring, it's terrible. Okay, and now, now, you are a six out of 10 engaged. Six out of 10 engaged, what does that feel like in your body? Hey, your six is high, awesome. I wanna see what your, I know, I wanna see what your 10 is. Okay, so six out of 10 engaged, like okay, cool, something's interesting happening, okay, I wanna be paying attention. All right, now you're like a 10 out of 10 engaged. What is your body like? Yes, whatever is happening is like the most amazing. Stay there, stay there. I didn't tell you to come back. You're a 10, you're a 10, you're a 10, you're a 10. Awesome. Now from this place, from this state, what are you gonna turn and say to the people around you? This is amazing. I'm so glad I'm here. Notice 
that, that boredom and engagement on some level is a choice. It's how we choose to participate. It's how we choose to show up. Our intention as a presenting team is to engage you. Like, really, trust me, believe me, like, that is our full intention. And we just ask you to meet us there. And part of the ways that we can do that is we have these awesome devices. They do wonderful things for us. And they can be really distracting. So uh, the ask is that while we're in session, if you can turn it off, if you can put it on airplane mode, and if you need to send an email or send a text message, do you step outside of the room to do that so that the people who are here can be fully focused and present? Do I have your agreement on that? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Sweet. Wait, can you take pictures, though? You can take pictures, totally. Yeah, you can totally take pictures. Um, and that's also partially why, thank you for asking, and that's partially why the programs are designed as they are, because for some people I know it's easier to take notes on a computer or device, and if you need to do that, go ahead. I would just ask if you can make this program your companion, then we would love for you to have that, because I think it'll be a nice condensed thing for you to take home with you. Great, so that's full participation. And you guys did a wonderful job with that. Next guideline is a friend is a stranger that you haven't met yet. So everyone in here is a potential friend for you. And some of you came here already knowing a fair amount of people, kind of feeling like this is a reunion of sorts. There's a lot of great people to catch up with. Anybody in here feel like, this is kind of a reunion. Like, I kind of know a bunch of people. This is pretty awesome. And then there's probably a lot of people, especially maybe some of our friends who came from far away, maybe don't know anyone in this room, or maybe know one or two other people. How many of you are in that place? Like, maybe I know one or two people here, maybe no one at all. Great. So anytime we come into a new group, there's always these questions in the back of my mind, right? Like, uh, do I belong? Where do I fit in? These people are amazing. Why am I here? Right? There's always that, that thing that we do of like, where is my place? And we're at the culture conference, so we're going to practice creating intentional culture. So we want to create a really inclusive atmosphere of trust, safety, and belonging. So um, can I see a show of hands if you are Okay, if you would invite someone to come up to you at any point during this conference and introduce themselves, would that be okay with you? Okay, awesome. And can you raise your hand if you commit to going up to at least one new person over the course of this weekend and introducing yourself? At least 10 people. Okay, there's like five people, 10 people, 100 people. Great, enthusiasm, awesome. So as many people as you want, at least one. And could you raise your hand if you are open and excited about making a new real friend, mentor, collaborator, someone who could be in your life beyond this weekend in a meaningful way? Look around for a sec. There's a lot of awesomeness waiting, waiting here for you. So we're going to get one more chance to uh, practice this in action. Um, so if you could take your program to the, to the front. You'll see on the front of your program, there's the logo, and then there's some text at the bottom. There's a lot of empty space there. That is there intentionally, because we're going to do a fun activity right now that you're going to color that in. So, so I would like you to find someone near you that you have not worked with yet, and silently, this is my challenge to you. It's tempting to talk, I know, but I need to give you some instructions. Silently exchange programs with them right now. Silently. Someone you have not worked with yet, just silently. Someone that you're near. If you're looking for a partner, you can raise your hand or walk around. And stay near the person that you exchanged with. You're going to need to be near that person. Be near that person. They can come to you. You can come to them. Anybody looking for a partner doesn't have a partner? We have one person. Do we need a partner? Can we find a partner for this person? Maybe Mo, do you want to step in? OK, Erica, great. OK, so you guys did such an awesome job of that. That is not an easy thing to do. So with this person that you just exchanged program with, what you're about to do is draw a portrait of them on the front of their program. <laughs> however, however, there are two very important rules. One is that you cannot lift your pen from the page, so it is one continuous line drawing. The second rule is that you cannot look down at your page while you are making the drawing. <laughs> No, no looking down, no lifting your pen, so you want to face your partner so you can take in all their features. Then I'm going to give you about 30 seconds, not too long. So you've got a partner, you've got their program. Get ready, put your pen on the paper. No looking down. Do we all commit no looking down? OK, great. And go. Draw the portrait. You've got 30 seconds. Do not look down at your page. Do not lift your pen off the paper. 
Awesome. You're doing it on their program forever to be embedded in their experience of this conference. Try to get their hair, their eyes, their glasses, their earrings, their mustache, their teeth, their ears. You got about 10 more seconds. 10 more seconds to get their face as best you can. Keep going, keep going. All the features, all the features, all the features. Great. And you can look down. exercise because it's a it's a fun and um, undercover way to get you to do eye gazing with a stranger for like a minute so uh, and I I learned that exercise from my friend Adam who's here and can you stand up for a sec this is Adam Rosendahl everyone and Adam's gonna be leading late night art tonight and we're gonna talk more about that later but just wanted to let you know Adam's in the room and that that's an example of the kind of fun exercises you're gonna be doing later tonight too Great. So do you have a masterpiece now on your program? <laughs> Perfect. Great. So you know, you never know when the next Picasso is sitting right next to you. OK, guys. Next guideline is beginner's mind, right? Simple, obvious, and often the simplest things are the hardest ones to do. So we all do come here with like a great amount of wisdom and experience. And we wouldn't be here if we already had all the answers, right? We're here to learn. We're here to discover. We're here to be curious. We're here to connect with other people and, and get inspired, get new ideas, and hopefully some awesome thought bombs go off in your brain while you're here, all new kinds of ideas. So just inviting this sense of beginner's mind, how can I really not only offer my wisdom, but listen, receive, get curious, and ask questions? So in light of that, um, there is on the front inside cover of your program, there's a sticky note there. And we're going to write in a moment on that sticky note. Um, so for this moment, I'd love you to just take a nice breath in. And as you exhale, just close your eyes. Just notice if there's any way that you could be more comfortable right now in this moment. So you feel like gravity kind of just like waterfalls through your structure. You're sitting with the least amount of effort. Your body's relaxed. Your mind is open, your belly's soft. Nice. And from this place, I want to invite you to think about a burning question. What is a question that is alive for you? Maybe it is a question that brought you into this room today. That if you learned more about this question this weekend, it would be a huge win for you. And it's not necessarily that we're going to find the answer to this question, but we can use this question as a guidepost for which breakout sessions we might attend or which conversations we really want to go deep in or the people that we want to connect with. So imagine it's like kind of a filter for your experience and a way to help you navigate and, and make choices this weekend. So imagine the question, and it might be something like, how can I be more compassionate with myself when I get triggered by someone on my team? Or how can I encourage a culture of direct and clear communication in my workplace? Or how can I invite my CEO to care more about culture? Could be anything. So thinking about what is most alive for you that if you were to really focus on this question for this weekend, it would help guide you in a really meaningful way. And when you feel like you have that question, ideally it's like an open-ended question, I'm going to ask you to write it on your sticky note, please. If you do not have a sticky note, then raise your hand and we can try to get you one. So I think we need a sticky note over here, if possible. I think one's coming, Jeremy. We need one over here in the front with Jeremy. And a couple more over here, Haley. Thank you. And 
then we need the Okay, so about the last 30 seconds to dial that question in. You can change it later, don't worry. You're not married to the question. It's just what is alive right now. Okay. So just like we did before with our, our sentences about what a great culture feels like, I'd love to hear what you guys are inquiring about. What's on your mind? What are you hoping to get from this experience? What's guiding you? So we're going to have a handful of people stand up, say your name, and just your question. Again, with, we don't need context, but just your name and your question. I'd love to get like five people, and um, let's keep bringing new voices into the room. So people who haven't yet shared, let's have some people. What is your question? All right, we got one over here. Mike is coming to you. <laughs> I think for recording purposes, it's Larry good to Hales have a microphone. with the James Irvine Foundation, and I would say, uh, how can I be effective and let go? Awesome. Thank you. All right, we've got some behind you. Uh, I'm Eric, and I said, how can I make sure our leadership team perpetuates the culture we have built as we grow? Great. Thank you. I'm Chen, and I wrote, uh, what's out there, and how do I try it? <laughs> nice. I'm Clark, I'm from Noble Partners. My question is, what are the tools and experiences that would allow two co-leaders uh, to make their relationship as mutually productive and transformative as possible? Cool. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Mala. My question is, what will happen if I say no? Oh, girl. <laughs> oh, girl. Yeah. I'm a yes woman. We're working on it. Hi, I'm Madison. My question is, how can I feel safe at work to give and receive feedback, take risks, be bold, and challenge myself to achieve the extraordinary? Hey, that's a lot of good questions in there. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Damon Klotz. Um, how do we help more companies put culture first? Yes. Awesome. Any more? One or two more? We've got one in there and one in the back. Perfect. Last two. Hi, I'm Norman. I work at the Stanford uh, Graduate School of Business. And I'm wondering, which Bay Area companies do facilitation work full time, and how can I learn to do that as well? Great. Thank you. I'm Anne, uh, and mine is, how can I activate my culture champion, so super engaged employees around the world, so I'm not changing culture as a team of one? Awesome. So as you guys are hearing these questions, you might get sparked by your own question. Maybe you have some resources to share with these people. So again, just keep cataloging. Oh, maybe I can help that person. Maybe I have something useful to share with them. So if you see them later, you can be like, hey, your question, I've got some ideas. Do you want to brainstorm together? So would you please take your sticky note and pass it into the center aisle? And we are going to collect them for magical purposes that are secret, <laughs> secret magical purposes. You will find out later. But please pass them into the center aisle. for sharing those. We're almost at the end of our guidelines. This one is look for the best, right? So just like we talked about boredom and engagement is on some level a choice, looking for the best also a choice. So this is how do we turn obstacles into opportunities? And that's our mindset, right? It's the way we're viewing things. So not everything is going to go the way we planned it. I'm going to make mistakes. You guys are going to make mistakes. Sometimes we're going to feel awkward. Sometimes we're like, why did I say that or do that or whatever it is. But how do we look for the best in the situation? So as you guys know, this is year one. 
We are doing our very best to make this an amazing experience for you, and we just ask for your patience and forgiveness. If there's any way it could be better for you, we want to make it better. Um, we just ask you to look for the best in every opportunity, whether that's with yourself, with a fellow participant, um, or with the situation. And the last one, my favorite one, is if you're having fun, you're doing it right. So there's no right way or wrong way to spend your time here. It's like follow, right, that old adage, like follow your bliss, follow your joy. Where are you most happy? And so it might be that while we're in a breakout session, you're like, man, I need to like get some sunshine. And you step outside and you take a big breath of air and you feel great. Or it might be getting another cup of coffee. Or it might be sitting with someone in a really intimate, in-depth conversation. So there's nothing that you have to do here. Everything is optional. This is your time. There's an invitation for you to participate in the way that benefits you the most. So if you follow your joy, joy you follow your bliss, you're going to be in the right place. And we trust that. You know what that is for you. And life is too short not to have fun. So there's going to be a lot of fun here this weekend. And we're going to do um, a quick, one of my favorite activities together, where you're going to get to a chance to practice looking for the best in yourself and others and having a lot of fun. So kind of best of both worlds. So what you're going to do is we're going to get in a team of three. And in that team of three, uh, one person will stand. And we'll just kind of cluster where you are. One person is going to stand. The other two people are going to give that person a standing ovation <laughs> just for being who they are, just for showing up. Like, you made it here. That's amazing. And your whole life has led you to this very moment to be who you are. And we want to celebrate that. So we're just going to be celebrating you for exactly who you are, for being here and showing up in the room today. This is going to be happening simultaneously in all the groups throughout the room. So it's going to be a lot of applause and cheering. That's great. So that'll happen for as long as it wants to happen. When it's complete, those two people will sit down. The receiver stays standing. And those two, um, two givers, basically, they're going to have 30 seconds. It's short. 30 seconds to share positive qualities that they see in that person. So it could be like kind or funny or joyful or smart or brilliant or warm or whatever, whatever you see. It is subjective. It's not objective. It's not the absolute truth. It's whatever you receive because, again, we emanate from the inside out, right? So wherever you go, you bring your whole self. And we can see you and we can feel you and we want to acknowledge the best in you. So we are looking from that place of looking for the best in you and just giving you popcorn qualities of what we see in you as a reflection and as a celebration of who you are. That's going to be 30 seconds. At the end of the 30 seconds, I'll let you know. I'll ring a bell. It'll be complete. As much as we can in silence, because again, everyone's going to be doing this at the same time, so a lot of potential noise, but we want to stay unified. It's important because it's like a ceremony, right? It's something that we're all doing together. It's nice to hold the silence, and then that person who's receiving will sit. A new person will stand. We'll go through the whole process again. Standing ovation for as long as it wants to happen. Sitting down, 30 seconds to give popcorn-style positive appreciation to your partner. I'll ring the bell at the end of the 30 seconds. Sit, and we'll do it one more time. Any questions on what we are about to do? The person who's getting the feedback, they stay standing the whole time? Yes, that is a great question. So the person who's getting the feedback, yes, they stand the whole time. And there is an art to receiving. <laughs> so the invitation is to really receive. Stand and take it in. You're just taking it in, taking it in. So some people, for some people, it's hard to receive compliments, right? But see if you can just really allow it to sink in of how this, these people are perceiving you in the best of ways, what you're offering by being in this room, just who you are, not your company, not your role, who you are, which is why we just have your first names on your name tags, because you're here as you and all of you. We want to bring all of you in. So yes? Is this in a larger group or in a This is in little groups of three. So you're going to be in trios, ideally trios. Um, we have some people. Hmm? We have some people, extra people, that can filter in with you if you're having a hard time finding group of three. And um, so let us do this. So I'd like you ideally to work with people, again, that you don't know. This is actually more fun to do with strangers because it helps you trust your imagination and your intuition. So you're going to find a group of three. And when your group is ready, you're going to have two people sitting and one person standing. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds to find a group of three, two people sitting, one person standing. Go. Yeah. I don't have time. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could make an announcement. There's people standing in the back, but there's definitely chairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Just invite them to come up. I got him turned. We're going to wait. We're going to all do it together. No problem. We're going to do it together. Okay, guys. Get ready. Give your partner positive feedback. 30 seconds. Can you just um, re-plug me in? Yeah. Just fell off. Thank you. Seconds, 30 seconds to give your partner positive appreciation. 30 seconds. with your partner, 30 seconds. Oh, okay, that was five. We're improving. Okay, so are we having fun yet? Yeah. Okay, awesome. So, does it feel good to give people a positive appreciation? Yeah. Yes. 
Awesome. For those of you that are like on the side or in the back, if you like, there are definitely seats up here. Feel free to filter in because we're about to move on to our first speaker of the morning.